some skeptics were convinced that captive bred lions could never be released into the wild. Would the lions be able to fend for themselves? Would their social structures remain intact? Would they be able to successfully hunt? Follow this engaging African story of a few extraordinary people working with extraordinary lions. Known as Alert, this groundbreaking program has one mission. Return Africa's lion population back to its former glory. Coming up in this exciting episode, two confident zebra stallions take on the ever-fervent Laili and Lewa. We catch up with the Ngamo Pride cubs as they perfect their tree climbing skills. The L lions attempt to dig a stubborn warthog out of his hole. Will they succeed? A new influx of volunteers have arrived and Nathan instructs them with an induction talk on how to treat walk and cope with lions. We introduce the formidable seas. This foursome adds a new dynamic to the park as they demonstrate their hunting prowess. And Laili notches up another triumph as she catches an African hare. It's a glorious crisp morning at Antelope Park and it's time for a walk with Lewa and Laili, who seem to be celebrating the new day with playful enthusiasm. is already thick with anticipation as the zebra herd with the renowned commando stallion has been spotted. The tall grass offers the perfect opportunity for the cats. Laili and this big boy have had a go at each other several times before and there's no telling who will be victorious today. A few months ago Laili was run over by this stallion. However, she has now packed on more pounds and muscle. Maybe the power scale will shift toward the ever persistent cat. Whilst the zebra keeps his beady eye on Laili, Lewa has gained confidence in her partner's intent and stalks through the undergrowth on the other side. The handlers are delighted to see these two cats working together as a team and trying to create distractions from all angles. If they could just circumnavigate past the commando stallion, the weaker zebra would be reachable. Unlikely, the big boy has bought his A-game and always a step ahead. Exhausted by the thrill of the game, the cats regroup and call it a morning. Nothing more to see here, so let's move over to the release site and catch up with the Ngamo lions, where the cubs are on great form and the focus of attention.
fast forward three months from now to see Ray's pivotal moment and the development of the Cubs. We've had the volunteers make some lovely name signs for us. Um, we've got an Oprah and a Mardi now at six months and Kinesa and Cora at seven months. We've waited a while till officially naming them and making the signs just due to, with them still being young, they could still be at risk and chances of survival, etc., etc. But they're doing very well, very strong. So a bit of a pivotal moment of hanging the signs up with the rest of the pride here. It's a wonderful milestone and testament to a great achievement in the ALERT program. A recap of the Cubs. Anopa, loving daughter to Ashanti and Milo. And Amadi, her champion brother. Curious Cora, Kenge and Milo's daughter. And sister to Kinisa, the explorer. Perfect. <laughs> it's a long time. Here's to putting the signs up on a stage three and a stage four eventually. Hopefully these signs will be around for a long time. It's a cold winter's morning at Antelope Park and we find the Ngama pride absorbing the early rays of warm sunlight. A distant lion call, perhaps from the breeding enclosures, draws Milo's attention. Wakanaka takes no interest and repositions herself on her termite mound throne. Ashanti, on the other hand, seems to be quite concerned and breaks the silence with a heartfelt response. Wakanaka, disturbed from her rest, is now up and about and makes futile tree climbing attempts. Little Kanisa seems to be making more progress than her older sister in the tree climbing department. Anopa watches with keen interest and learns, her breath condensing in the cool air. On the other side of the park, something else's steamy breath has caught the elves' attention. A warthog has taken refuge in the hole, and Laili approaches with avid interest. Perhaps she could dig it out. The older MK lions have actually successfully killed Warthog in this fashion before. It's not an easy undertaking, and armed with sharp, scything tusks, Warthog can be a formidable animal. Lethargic Lewa has clearly lost interest, but Laili looks like she's going to wait it out patiently. Warthog wins this game of patience and settles in for the whole day. Today, a new influx of volunteers have arrived at Antelope Park and gathered to take note of Nathan's induction course on handling lions. Okay, so we'll let them up. The first thing um, I want to show you guys, okay, is how to greet a lion. Um, basically, the greeting is quite important because it's the first impression that they have on you, so that, that's where they really gauge you, okay? That's where they're really going to gauge, is this person more dominant or less dominant, okay? A lot of it works on dominance. Um, we are all, all automatically uh, uh, more dominant than the lions because our eye level is higher, okay? Our eye level plays a big part. The dominant males are the big guys. They stand the tallest. Um, they're, they're the most dominant. Equally, you need to remember whenever your eye level is, is moved to the same level as theirs, either you crouch down or, or you're very low, low to the ground or they're up on an anteel or a rock or something, same thing. Okay? It can change, uh, slightly change that dominance and, um, and, and you become more, uh, more or less an equal. Never greet a lion crouching down. Okay? Keep, keep your eye level up and you keep your palm out, okay? palm facing out. So these lions are going to come out of this enclosure. You keep your palm out like this, okay? Number one is it gives them something to aim for, okay? So they can aim for your palm. If you've just got legs standing there, I mean, all of these legs here, 
is really just what they can see. So they're just going to end up moving like this, end up going through people's legs, and it just becomes very, very awkward, okay? So if you give them a palm and you just guide their head around, either guide it behind you or guide it to the side of you, just follow them. Don't try and force them in a way that you want them to go. Just guide their head around, okay? At least you're pushing their head down. That's where the dangerous parts are. That's where the teeth are. That's where they're going to bite from, okay? So that's, that's the area you would really want to guide around. And you just sort of get them just under the cheekbone. You'll feel the side of their cheekbone on their head. You just sort of guide their head around and it'll go to the next person. And eventually you'll be passing it down the line and, and then she'll go off into the bush, okay? The handlers in, in this, in this uh, activity, okay, the handlers in these walks are the guys really that are in charge. They will say things like stand up, watch your back, get out the way. You just need to be listening all the time, okay? Listening all the time to what the handlers say. Okay? Safety is always the best policy when it comes to lines. So just always be safe. Always remember that safety is number one. So the handles open the gates. We've just got to go a good five, ten meters away or so. Just give them something to follow, something to come to. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Lewa looks like she has picked up a scent of something. Perhaps the volunteers are in for a bit of excitement as well. Harder beasts have got the lion visual, and it's unlikely the elves will get very far in this case. With speed on their side, these harder beasts would have to be caught napping. After the sideshow, Nathan has more to add. Okay, you'll find that the lion handlers often very little have anything to do with the lions in terms of an affection face, okay, or in terms of affection, okay. They don't really show them, oh, my babies, how's it going? Well, reason being is that they take the role in a pride uh, of that of a dominant male, okay. A dominant male with lions at this sort of age um, isn't that affectionate. You guys will see it in the release site, Milo and uh, Wakanaka, okay. Uh, Milo is not very affectionate anymore to Wakanaka. He tolerates her and, 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 and maybe gives her a greeting, but doesn't really play with her and really have that, that cuddly father-daughter relationship that they used to. Uh, senior staff like myself, Jealous, Colin, we sort of uh, take the role of, uh, I, I want to say dominant females, but I'm not like that. <laughs> dominant females though. Newcomers like yourselves and, and older volunteers are seen as um, exactly that, newcomers to the pride, okay? Uh, automatically a little bit more dominant, so you would fall into like a, a sub-adult category as opposed to a cub category. So it makes you automatically a little bit more, more dominant uh, because you're eye level, but do need to actually take note and just, just know that they can test that dominance. And it'll be a small thing like a little ankle tap or, or a notice or some that, and, and small things that you guys need to learn how to pick up on. Um, little things like always being confident, okay? Now, there's a, there's a very big difference between overconfidence and just, just the right amount of confidence, okay? Never be overconfident. That's, that's detrimental now. Never, never just walk up to a lion and start touching it on its face, okay? We don't recommend anybody touches a lion on the face. You can touch the lion on the sides and on the back and that. It is an area on the lion's body where it, if it is going to react, if you're touching it, that's where it's going to react. It's the way lions in the wild assert their dominance on each other is all on the face. You'll often see, um, I've seen on documentaries, I've seen in the pride, I've seen uh, in other wild prides that They'll often slap their cubs, okay? Much, much like a, a cheeky teenager will get a slap from the mother, the female does the same thing, a hard slap across the side of the face. I've seen cubs rolling off from the distance and all that sort of thing. We're standing here, if, if Lewa gets up and starts walking towards me and I step out of her way and she carries on past, that's now automatically me stepping down to her, which in her mind is, okay, ding, ding, that's one point to me. You guys have all heard that saying that dogs or, or cats or lions can sense your fear. You guys have heard that saying, eh? I don't necessarily agree with that. It's not a sixth sense that, that these animals can sense your fear, okay? It's more that these animals are, they survive by being experts at reading body language, okay? They, they, they read uh, the, the subtle differences in a wildebeest, okay? One, one will be limping slightly. One will have a bit of a hunched back because it's got a sore stomach. Lots of different things like that, okay? Very, very subtle differences in, in, in the movement of these animals' body language. And they'll pick it up in yours. A slight hesitation when you, when you go down to go and touch it or, or a bit, bit more of a step to the side. They'll notice those things. They'll see those things. And it's just ching, 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 one to me, one to me, one to me. And then eventually it's going to get to a point where they're going to say, I can take this guy, look at how many points I've got compared to his. And not, not that they'll always think like that, but you, but you understand what I'm saying. Likewise, you can add them up, okay? You can add them up on your, on your tally by being confident, okay? By not stepping out the way, by not moving away. You might be scared, but, but don't show it. These points to ponder will be worth remembering as most of these volunteers will work with these lions for up to three months and safety is paramount.
awkward and I'm sure many of us, many of you guys would love to be able to rough and tumble and get in there and play with a lion. But uh, the reality is we can't, okay? Lion's skin is eight times thicker than ours, okay? So when they're clawing each other and biting each other, they can handle it, okay? Our, our little few millimeter thick skin is not gonna cut their, uh, their, their claws and their teeth. So don't initiate things, okay? Don't make them jump, don't do it. So play with them at sort of ground level, okay? Let them, let them do the jumping that with each other. We wanna have as little impact on these guys as possible, okay, but still be able to have fun with them, still be able to be part of the pride and still be able to get them to do what lions, uh, what lions are supposed to be doing, okay, out in the bush. They're very inquisitive, eh? You know the saying, curiosity killed the cat, it still applies to lions, eh? They still get very curious. Back at the Ngamo release site, little Kanisa has eyes a bit bigger than her belly. It's fantastic to see Kanisa stalk a giant in her world. Perhaps she's hoping the sleeping pride would wake up and see her target. We've got a herd of impala deep in the thicket here. And I think it's Kanisa, but I'm not too sure. It probably is her. Um, she's taking quite a strong interest in the herd. They're about 40 metres away, but she's stalking. She's starting to get into the motions um, of what it is to be a hunter. She's picking up from her mother and the other pride members, mimicking their movements very well. And from that, the other cubs are doing, doing exactly the same. So maybe even for a kill earlier than we think. Mardi's just come and said hello to Dad. Um, he's the cub we see most often going for a, a quick greet and a, a short play session. And Milo's quite um, tolerant of him as well. I think he's got a bit of a soft spot for his uh, for the air to the throne and such. It's quite sweet. He was even grooming him the other day, which I've never seen him do. When it comes to waking up the rest of the pride, there's nothing subtle at all about these enthusiastic cubs. As if to announce a time for departure, Milo marks a tree and he's on his way with the rest of the pride. The Ngamo are on the prowl looking high and low for their next snack. Surprisingly, Kenge has beaten them to it and has taken down a small diker. As a hungry mother of two suckling cubs, she needs to eat whatever she can. The question is, Will she be able to keep her prize from all the other hungry mouths? Kenge is fiercely possessive and as quick as a flash drags her meal away and tries to hide in the concealment of tall grass. Luckily for the insatiable cubs, a shanty soon arrives bringing with her another source of food mother's milk. Kenge hogs the diker for herself and happily gnaws away into the night. In the distance, the neighboring land has an out of control bushfire and has been detected early enough to backburn on the Antelope Park land to avoid serious damage. These fires are common in the dry winter period, and the Antelope Park team and volunteers tackle the job in good time. The flames of night fade, and the African sun brings its golden warmth.
Laili and Lewa are soaking up the sunlight before their walk. There's an ice cold chill in the air this morning, but things will typically soon warm up for the walking party. Laili melts into the bush as she spots an impala herd. The great huntress stealthily edges closer, locked on a single impala on the side. Unfortunately, Lewa blows Laili's plan as she rushes clumsily towards the impala herd. Laili's target takes flight, and the herd bombshell toward the denser vegetation. Laili doesn't skip a beat and heads directly toward the panicking Impala. Lewa, in the meantime, has gained some ground on the fleeting animals and narrowly misses taking down an Impala. Laili is waiting around the corner and cunningly directs the Impala back towards her sister. It's an eventful start to the morning, to say the least. I think one of the interesting things that's um, about our line walks, everything that we're doing with, with our captive bred lines when they're getting the exposure to the wild, that everything is compared to about 18 or 20 years of data that's been collected with actual lines in the wild. And all the data I'm gathering, I'm basically noting down um, every breath and every movement. All the data is collected and it's all compared. Can these once captive born and raised lions um, be, be rewilded as such? Can they live as a dynamic pride? Can they be self-sustainable? Can they breed successfully? Well, the thousands of data collectors absolutely snap exactly the same as those lions that were just born and bred in the complete wild. And these guys have been in here since September 2010 and they've, they've ticked all the boxes. They've, they've proven us more time and time again. Um, just how capable they are of being a wild pride. We're in the grasps of a very cold winter at the moment. It's now getting to the mid-June. Uh, we've had a very dry year, so it's, it's extremely cold at the moment, and the lions are starting to feel that as well. We're seeing them, like here, um, snuggled up for body warmth. You, early morning, we're going to start seeing this more and more often. So we've got a shanty in the middle here, um, being groomed by Kwali and um, Kenge. The shanty is quite a dominant female. Um, we'll often see her receiving um, a lot of social interactions. And um, this social interaction, it's a way of maintaining bonds between Pride members, but it's also, there's also a bit of a selfish aspect to this. So Kenge is grooming a shanty now. She's grooming a shanty because she wants a shanty to help her continue to raise, look after her cubs, defend her territory and source her food, um, basically help her survive within this, this pride aspect. Um, your lesser ranking females, so in here, Nala and Narnia, you will see them engage less in social interactions. They will give more than they receive. Um, they're still important prime members, but Ashanti is kind of a top-notch female to everyone else. So it's in Kenge and Kwali's interests to spend more time being social with her. When Ray returns in the evening, she finds the Ngama Pride grooming again. Ashanti is once again the lucky recipient, as dominant fire gives her attention. Meanwhile, a 
Nopa has found a zebra hoof, and the possessive game begins. This game takes them well into the evening, and the hoof has done some considerable mileage. has full control of the hoof and announces the triumph with a roar. After much amusement, the game must come to an end as Kanisa chooses her moment and makes a dash for it. What better way than to wake up to the roars of the magnificent Milo? He's got everyone's attention and the cubs are especially curious. They've obviously been on an extended walkabout, judging by the affectionate reunion. It's this tactile social bond that makes lions so interesting to observe and very rewarding for the researchers. The elves, Laili and Lewa, are also having fun this morning and have become very skilled tree climbers. It really is a fallacy to think you would be safe from lions if you scurried up a tree. The 
The handlers give them every opportunity to hone their skills in all areas, and it seems like the elves have mastered the art of balance. We leave the elves to continue exploring and catch up with Dan to introduce a very special foursome. Okay, so we're here at uh, the Night Encounter Enclosures at Antelope Park. Uh, we've just received the four C's back from Victoria Falls. That's Chundu, Chobi, Chete and Chisa. Two males, two females. Uh, they were born here at Antelope Park in our breeding program. And then they were moved to Victoria Falls to do their lion walks. They were walking in a big five national park and actually Chobi and Chisa managed to kill a buffalo, fully grown female buffalo at 17 months old. Going back eight months ago at the Victoria Falls program, we find Chobi and Chisa on a daily walk. Chobi became very intent on the sighting of a female buffalo. Chisa looked on with interest as Chobi made her first move. With evidence that the buffalo was injured, the cats used this to their advantage. Avoiding a frontal attack at all costs, cats surrounded and disorientated the buffalo. Chisa chose his moment and launched onto the back of the distressed animal. It didn't take long for Chisa to suffocate the buffalo and begin their well-deserved feast. They had killed other animals up until now, but nothing as big and dangerous as this beast. Over to Dan again. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk these lions today. We're getting them ready for their night encounters, which is the later part of stage one. Today we're going to introduce them to a vehicle and hopefully uh, go stalking some Impala. Yeah, this is uh, one of the first times these guys have come across a vehicle. These lions, they love anything that moves and make noise, so a vehicle is uh, Perfect to grab their attention. The seas are loving this outing and getting used to the lay of the land again, as it's been months since they were here last. Plenty of impala are clearly visible, but it seems the lions are only in the mood for play right now. We'll come back to them later. Let's catch up with the L lions. So we're coming out this afternoon with two new lions to the night hunting uh, sort of stage. Uh, they're still in our lion walking stage, so they're fairly young. Uh, they're just, just on 17 months old. 
um, but really showing their, their, their hunting initiative, really out on their walks, really taking on the prey. So we feel they're ready and big enough now to take out into the night, into their natural time and see how they fare under those conditions. So we'll be taking them out. It's early evening now and carry on in, in, into the night. Impala and Hartebeest are on offer this afternoon, and Laili and Lewa are caught in the open. The Hartebeest only have eyes for the lions, and won't make it easy for them at all. So Laili's just uh, encountered some of the, the, the Hartebeest that we have here, and clearly shows that uh, these guys are still very much learning. Full view, went out, very visible to the heart of beast. The heart of beast seemed to tease her a bit and come running up and, and uh, keep following her, following up behind her. Uh, the saying goes, it's the predator that you don't see, that's the one you worry about. So they just keep an eye on the danger, making sure that it's not a threat before they carry on doing what they do. With this uh, bush cover that we're coming up to, she might, she might give them another gun. Okay, you can see herself a bit more. Lions need that element of surprise to be able to bring down and catch them and by that they use any sort of cover they have. Trees, grass, bushes. With very little advantage for the elves, the harter beasts hold the cards. However, nightfall is coming soon and something to look forward to as Laili and Lewa have racked up quite an appetite. Ah, the elves are amazing. Yeah, I, I remember Lewa very well. She, uh, she was actually raised by my wife in our house. I love Lewa and Laili. I love all the lions, but um, Lewa was actually, she was born an only cub. And got quite lonely a lot. Uh, we, we actually eventually gave her a little teddy bear, which she used to, to, to move around with and, 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 and sort of suck on and that, and, and just have her be, be her centre of comfort. And she was quite spoiled when she was younger. And, uh, and she was laughed at and joked at and, 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 and told, oh, look at this lion, it's not even a lion, she's, uh, she's got teddy bears, all that sort of thing. So she's got a special place in my heart. Lions are very social animals, they need to have, uh, they need, they're very sociable, they need to be in constant contact with each other, reassuring bonds, reaffirming bonds until we could get her a, a stepsister. A, a lion that we imported from South Africa. To grow up with. And, and she changed. The teddy bear was not necessary anymore. She had a companion, a companion that can play back with her now. She's got Laili, who's actually made them a formidable force. And then you started to see the lion come out of it. Then, then, then you started to see the ankle tapping, the, the jumping, the, the practicing. So those two are a great nucleus for a pride. It was great watching them grow. Laila will make a great mother because she's so friendly. And Laili is, is by, she's an awesome hunter. Going over to the other great hunters, the seas are still on the prowl with Dan, Ray and the handlers. Their playful moods have soon changed to hunter mode, and the females, Chobi and Chete, are particularly focused. Guinea fowl momentarily draw Chete's attention, but the lions are clearly after bigger options. Now we're talking. A little big, perhaps, but it's not unusual for lions to bring down giraffe. With the number of giraffe for the taking, it's the big male chundu that cannot resist, and he initiates the chase. Not only exciting for the lions, the camera crew who have to keep up with the action too. With extra long legs, the giraffe are deceptively quick and leave nothing to chance. So the, the lions have been stalking giraffes. Uh, they split up. Um, one's been separated from the hood and the three are after it now. By the time we all catch up to the lions, the giraffe are nowhere to be seen and darkness has fallen. The lions still seem full of energy and willing to keep on hunting. While normal torches are necessary for the handlers to walk safely, an infrared light is used for the cameras to pick up images 
so as not to give the prey or lions an added advantage. So we're heading back to the enclosures now. On the way back to the enclosures, we've just seen giraffe and Tiete, smallest female. She ran straight towards it. <laughs> she took the direct approach and uh, the giraffe ran away. The giraffe are quite spooked now. So on the way back to the enclosure, hopefully we'll run into some more game. But if not, it's been very successful. We've had about four chases this evening. And each one is a learning curve, a learning process. So we'll try again tomorrow. Approximately 10 kilometers away, the L lions are in their element too, as they seek an evening meal. You may remember the L's in parlor kill from the last episode. No doubt these cats are hoping for a repeat performance and haven't forgotten the taste of fresh meat as they focus on anything that moves tonight. As the night wears on, a rustle in the grass draws Laili's attention, but it's difficult to see what's hiding. She launches her attack, and as we catch up, we find it's a mere African hare. Nevertheless, this is potentially a tasty snack, and worth keeping away from curious labor. Laili finds a suitable spot to tuck into her prize. All in all, a good night for Laili. Lewa will have to go hungry tonight. We leave the lions at this point, but you simply cannot miss the next episode when we get a first time peek at the adorable additions in the denning enclosure. Lewa and Laili take their hunting skills to a new level and tackle a kudu. Find out what Ray's doing with hyena poo. A historical kill is notched up by the pea lions. The bloodthirsty and gamo pride strike again. Meet the tiny cub's new dad. And Kwali takes a nasty bite to the cheek. Can she hang on to her prize?